so good morning to all of you we are starting the session without any break and the break will be at 11:15 15, 15 minutes break and the first session is on college administration and the teachers role in this session i am going to discuss about the very rudiments of administration to the top level of administration because i feel that those of you who would like to stay back in academics should come up to the level of the head of the institution that's what normally we can expect but those who may quit the profession in between they have no chance so right from the base level of academics nowadays it is the post of assistant professor in a college when we joined it was lecturer in the college to the level of head of the institution maybe director or principal and beyond that growing is limited it's always so many parameters are there to become the vice chancellor or something like that but up to the head of the institution is a normal growth so i'll be telling very basic things required for that and how you can take care of it i think somebody can close that door because ac is being wasted first thing is let us see what are the types of colleges many people have got confusion with this because i felt that even senior teachers not why not teachers even when we were having the principals meeting many people were asking doubts on these aspects let us see the types of institutions india is the biggest country in terms of population you know that last month we overtook china so we are on top of the world with 143 crores of population or uh, 1.43 billion population and we are not really top in population in the number of institutions in the country also we are on top in quantity not in quality for example in uh, india there are 44000 affiliated colleges 11100 autonomous colleges 1096 universities most of them affiliating universities means there are big universities like osmania which affiliates more than 900 colleges anna university which used to have more than 800 now below 700 only such big universities are there in kerala the biggest or the largest university is calicut university having around 400 colleges followed by Kerala University 300 plus colleges and the smallest among them is Cochin University I think they do it later to be distributed so the smallest university in Kerala is uh, right now Cochin University because it's only having its uh, constituent college inside plus one more college outside but then uh, we have a central university kerala there are 16 universities one among them is a central university long back we used to have only three universities now it has grown to 16 universities including the health university the technological university and all such things so uh, i'll be discussing about the types of institutions because we are working in academics the administration types in all these institutions are entirely different so 
I feel, I look forward that most of you will have portability. You are not going to stay back in a typical institution in the longer run. Because, because change of institutions like in the western countries is going to be here. We used to have a comfortable system of joining and retiring from the institution. I still remember when uh, Dr. Ilango, the former Vice Chancellor of Bharatiya University, was delivering a talk at Palakkad at the Institution of Engineers, he was mentioning that the day he joined as a lecturer, he was calculating how much will be his pay at the time of retirement. That was possible earlier. Now not like that. Portability is going to be there in all the institutions. And now the government conditions are also changing. Hereafter, there will be selection at every level. Selection at director level, selection at uh, professor level, selection at associate professor level. All these levels selection will be there. And the age bar is going to be not there. For example, earlier in Kerala, you had to be below 38 years of age to get into government service. That will vanish soon. Even at the age of 65 years, you can get into government service. Because in teaching, the permitted age at the national level is 70 years. On condition that you should get into service before 65 years. After 65 years, you cannot get into service. But retirement age, earlier the head of the institution retirement age was 65. Now that is also 70. So anybody can be in academics up to 70, provided you get into service before 65, even up to vice chancellor or director in this permitted. So, because of these changes, you have a portability. Any time in your working life, you can change the institutions. So, can be to any of these institutions. Because we have got an ocean of academic institutions, you can change over to any one of them. And the first type of institution is a government. And government means the salary goes from the government treasury. That is government. For example, next door we have got IIT. IIT is not government institution. IIT comes under center of excellence, the last title. IIT comes under the last item, center of excellence. Government institution means salary comes from government treasury. There are state government and funnily enough, I don't know whether you know, IIT director is not a gazetted officer. I don't know how many of you know it. So gazetted is a central government post, state gazetted and central gazetted. Even an assistant professor in a government college is a gazetted officer, but the IIT director is not gazetted. The highest post in railways at Palakkad in Kerala is the divisional railway manager, DRM. DRM is not a gazetted post. Why I am telling this is don't get confused between government and centers of excellence. IITs, NITs, IAMs, these are all centers of excellence. Some centers of excellence are given deemed to be university status. Some are not given. For example, IITs and NITs are given deemed to be university status. IAMs are not given. That is why IAMs cannot issue degrees. IAMs can issue only diploma. If you do a postgraduate course in IAM, you will be given a postgraduate diploma in management, PGDM. It is better than any MBA course that is different. But it's only a diploma. If you do a PhD in IAM, you will be get an FIAM, Fellow of the Indian Institute of Management, not PhD, because it is not a university. Only universities can issue degrees in India. So, some centers of excellence are universities, deemed to be universities. Some are not. Say, some medical hands are here. For example, at Tiruvandara, there are three institutions. Sri Chitra Institute of Medical Science, Regional Cancer Center, Rajiv Gandhi Center for Biotechnology. Medical hands will be knowing all these things. These three are centers of excellence. But remember, out of that only Sri Chitra is deemed university. Other two are not having the right to issue degree. That is why if you if you do a PG course in RCC or Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Biotechnology, you will get the degree from the University of Kerala. 
It's only namesake, but still, the degree is from there. So this is the difference between center of excellence and uh, deemed to be universities. Then aided, aided institutions are a lot many. IIT is an aided institution. NIT is an aided institution. The NSS College of Engineering, which our principal was here, is an aided institution. PhD College of Technology, Coimbatore, is an aided institution. What do aided means? The entire expense is borne by the government. But they are not governments. And their financial burden is taken by the government, like IIT. IIT, IIT is partly self-financed. I'll, uh, I'll explain that. IIT is not fully aided. To IIT, there is a limit to the grant. Remaining, they have to make themselves. That is why all the professors, and uh, including director in IIT, they are working hard to generate funds. If they don't generate funds, they won't be able to spend it. And see, the fees in IIT is much higher than the fees in self-financed institutions. The fees in IAM is much higher than the fees in... They are all self-financed up to an extent because government will give them grants only very limited. Even universities are self-financed. Government will give grants. This grant may be given in two ways. One is lump sum grant, the other is monthly grant. Most of the institutions get lump sum grant. Lump sum grant means once or twice or thrice in a year. Say for example, PhD College of Technology gets lump sum grant. Once or twice in a year they will get huge funds. Whereas NSS College of Engineering is getting annual pay. All the teacher salary government pays directly. So it's not lump sum. It is regular. Okay. IITs get lump sum grant. Why I am telling this is our teachers should know these things when you when you port to another institution, you should know what type of institution it is. Then self-financed, there are government self-financed, private self-financed. See, all the, most of the universities in Kerala are having their own colleges, mostly self-financed. Calicut University is having an engineering college, self-financed. Cochin University is having two engineering colleges, it is self-financed. Kerala University is having an engineering college, it is self-financed owned by the university but the college is self-financed. So that is why we say government self-financed and private self-financed. Private self-financed as per the UGC Act, private self-financed colleges cannot be owned by an individual. It should be owned by a trust or a society or a company. There are some registration rules in that. Companies Act, Societies Act, some clauses are specified. I am not going into those things. This college, all affiliate colleges are under trust, not under company. Okay. NSS college is under company. It is raised under a company act. It is not self-financed actually, it is fully aided. Okay. Then what do you mean by autonomous colleges? Uh, if you have any clarification on this, I am not taking much time to explain a lot. There are so many things behind it. If you have any clarification, then you can clarify whichever is your specific because I've been involved in all these colleges, so uh, the the inner things, the deep inner things, I'm aware of it. And uh, autonomous institutions are in those academic autonomy is given and administrative autonomy is given. So autonomy is of two types: academic autonomy and administrative autonomy. Remember, IITs have got only academic autonomy, not administrative autonomy. Okay, because IITs can do anything academically, but administration. There is a government secretary in charge of it. There is at national level like AICT, there is what is called IIT Council. You have heard of, all of you have heard about AICT. But there is an equal body which is called IIT Council, IITC. That decides all the funding. A government secretary will be in charge of that, like the AICT secretary. There is a separate council with equal rights like AICT. Of course, AICT is having around 10,000 institutions, but IITC is having only 23 institutions, that's all. But they are the three, that's all. Okay. Now, autonomous institution means government autonomous and private autonomous. Like IIT is a government autonomous institution. Uh, uh, you may see, say, Rajagiri Engineering College is a private autonomous institution. Like that. Self financed autonomous institution. Aided also, for example, uh, the, the uh, State government has given autonomy status to many government aided institutions in Kerala, including Maharaja's College, St. Joseph's College. These are all uh, autonomous institutions, means they can decide their curriculum. 
Autonomous means they can decide their curriculum, they can value their purpose, they can declare the results, that is autonomous. Now coming to deemed to be university, uh, now affiliated. There are two types of colleges, constituent colleges and affiliated colleges. We are an affiliated college. All the colleges in Ahilya campus are affiliated colleges, means we are affiliated to a university. Now the new education policy is going to change it. That I will discuss in another session, how the NEP is going to change the affiliation status. Whereas there are colleges which are constituent colleges. Constituent colleges means it is within the university. Like uh, the California University is having a college inside it, it is constituent college. Like Cochin University is a college have inside it, it is constituent college. All other colleges are affiliated colleges. Universities are also different types. Affiliating universities are there, non-affiliating universities are there. Like uh, Kuhas is an affiliating university, KTU is an affiliating university. Cochin University is not affiliating now. Earlier it had that facility, now no. Uh, so many, around 14 engineering colleges were affiliated to KTU, uh, sorry, Cochin University. Now that permission is not there. It was a particular order for that. Central University, Casa Road is non-affiliating university. All the central universities are non-affiliating universities. They can work in their campus only. No college can be affiliated to that. <coughs> then deemed to be university, any institution which has got 15 years of experience and which has got 2 of 1 12 status from the UGC can apply to be a deemed to be university. We are 4 years short of it. Otherwise we would have got into it. Deemed to be university means you apply to the UGC for independent university status. Deemed to be university is having national recognition. A deemed to be university can have its campus anywhere in the country, not abroad. Abroad you have to take special permission. Some universities have got abroad campus, deemed to be university, like Birla Institute, like Amiti University, they are having abroad campus. That special permission from the government of India, parliament is required. But anywhere in India you can work, for example, Amrita deemed university is in Tamil Nadu, Timadai. Its campus is there at Karnagarpalli, at Ernakulam, at uh, Nagarboil, at uh, Bangalore, anywhere it can be there. This is the status of deemed university. Then private university is there. Private university, deemed university is as per the UGC Act. UGC gives permission for deemed university. Private university is uh, approved by the state legislature. For example, Kerala government can permit private university. In Kerala, no private university, no deemed university. Because for both, the state government should give permission. In Chhattisgarh, there are a lot of private universities. The government of Chhattisgarh has given permission to start private universities. So private universities can operate only in that state. Whereas deemed universities can operate anywhere in the country. And deemed universities, even a university which is just going to start can also get university status, that is called the Novo Deemed University. You would have heard about the GIA University, Reliance. It is going to be the Novo Deemed University. They feel that the institution is going to be a center of excellence. They give a university status. Very difficult to get it. That is called de Novo. Without 15 years experience, you can get a Deemed University. Okay. Then, uh, uh, government university, two types of government university, central and state. For example, Kuhas is a state university, KTU is a state university, Kerala University is a state university, Calicut University is a state university. They are established by an act of the state legislature, state assembly, and with approval from the UGC. Central University is established by an act of the parliament with approval from the government of India. This is the procedure. Why I told this is, I know many teachers are not still, as I told, many principals are also not aware of the difference between or the nuances between this. And remember, these are all concerned with the administration of the college. What type of institution you are working depends on what way you have to approach it. So the type of the institution you should be aware about. And as I have told, times are changing. You will, many of you will get opportunity to change from one type of institution to the other type of institution. Earlier in, in our young days there was a craze for government institutions because it offered pension. When you retire till your death, 
you are assured a monthly payment, almost half of the last tranche salary, and every time it will be increased also. So, very, very attractive. But that is going to stop. It already stopped in state and center. Now, no pension for anybody who joins in the academic sector. Uh, now, if you join the government sector, no pension is there. It's only ESI uh, related pension or uh, contributory provident fund and such things are there. No government pension. Government pension comes through the government treasury. That is high, very high. Take for example, a professor who retires from a government or aided college, at the time of retirement may have two to two and a half lakhs rupees salary. His pension will be above one lakh rupees. Much better than the salary a professor may get in a private institution. This is what happens. So that system is abolished. Now nowhere. Even IITs and NITs were not having pension even earlier. You are aware of it? IIT professors and NIT professors were not having pension even earlier. But at the time of retirement, their gratuity was better compared to the state government jobs. Gratuity means a whole lump sum amount will be given to them. But still I feel, taking the monetary value and the lifespan, the government pension is far, far better than this gratuity. Because it goes on increasing as the money value changes. Whereas the gratuity you get this year, its value will be outdated after 10 years. This can happen. Anyway, that is one thing. Now, how the college administration takes place? This also you should know. This is actually the beginning of our topic today. So far I was giving a premising work so that you know what are the types of institutions. Now let us see types of college administration. In government colleges, government is the absolute authority. The government in any academic sector means the secretary to the government, that's all. Whether secretary to government of Kerala or secretary uh, education to government of India. Say for example, the last word for an IIT will be secretary to government of India. Last word for ASCT will be secretary to government of India education. Whereas the last word for a state government institution or university will be the secretary higher education government of Kerala. Okay? Sometimes the secretary is senior, secretary will become principal secretary. Still senior may become additional chief secretary. I have seen in Kerala, sometimes the secretary may be ordinary secretary. So senior person is there, maybe principal secretary or additional chief secretary. Government rank is secretary. Principal Secretary, Additional Chief Secretary, Chief Secretary. Chief Secretary will not be in charge of uh, education anyway. I think I have to make this silent. So every government institution is administered by the government. Means, if it is a central government institution by the secretary, education. Earlier it was MHRD, now changed. It is education. Secretary, education, government of India. Or secretary, Kerala there are two sections, higher education and education. Higher education for colleges, education for schools up to 12 standards. So Kerala, all the colleges, whether it is Engineering college or medical college. Medical college, there is a different sale time. In all the colleges in Kerala, come under what is called secretary, higher education or principal secretary, higher education. Unlike many other states in Kerala, there is a typical difference in some cases. The All the medical and paramedical institutions do come under secretary health department. Secretary or principal. Only in Kerala I have seen this. Most of the states it is not like that. Any education institution come under education secretary, not under uh, health secretary. In Kerala, medical and paramedical institutions come under health secretary, secretary health department. Similarly, LLB colleges come under law secretary, secretary law department. It's a peculiarity here. All other institutions come under secretary higher education. Agriculture colleges come under agriculture university and agriculture uh, colleges come under secretary agriculture. Peculiar in this state, uh, at the government of India level, no, not like that. All, uh, all higher education institutions come under secretary higher education. They are only secretary education, not higher education. Then in the government sector, the principal will be reporting to director. For example, 
the principal of an engineering college will be reporting to director of technical education the principal of a medical college will be reporting to director of medical education the principal of uh, an arts and science college will be reporting to director of collegiate education that director will be reporting to the principal secretary or secretary of that department whether higher education or medical education or legal education like that that is a procedure so that is a difficulty the principal of a government college is tied in hands i have been in some of the uh, boards of the government colleges government colleges also have board board of governance it is there for every government college board of governance or governing council we call it that's a requirement as per ugc every institution should have a board of governors or governing council what this board does this board meets and takes big big decisions secretary of the board is the principal the principal then has to write to the director asking for permission take for example sri krishnavara engineering college i'll tell a very simple anybody from sri krishnavara here no one is there sri krishnavara engineering college i think it happened in 2015 yes 2015 we found that out of 70 plus teachers required there only 30 plus are in place all remaining vacancies they are man- managing with some guest faculty so the board took a decision the board chairman was a senior professor from indian institute of science so every 3 months the board will meet in the college so we collectively decided that to request the government to immediately post the remaining teachers that is what the board can do the board decided that the principal conveyed the decision to the director of technical education next board we reviewed it next four boards we reviewed it no positive this is a tragedy of a government institution so principal cannot do anything there now i was talking to the principal of nss college of engineering In mechanical department more than half the posts are vacant now they are having guest faculty this faculty principal can post and i asked him any procedure taken up so he said government permission is awaited what to do but at least nowadays permission to appoint guest is given there was a time when guest also couldn't be taken so when we were a uh, young faculty we used to have three four subjects engaged by the same faculty what else to do the college has to run then uh, many of the colleges pta started to be parent teacher association said we will pay nominally per hour basis you take some teachers many colleges used to run like that so don't think that government institution everything is glorious no so many difficulties principal is helpless in government and aided institution most of the aided institutions are also working here but in aided institution one more thing is government then instead of director it is a governing body there is a governing body instead of direct so the governing body has to decide so uh, governing body has then to report to direct that is the procedure governing body is independent and direct is independent you take our example nss college of engineering it's a government aided institution the principal of the nss college of engineering is parallelly reporting to three authorities no way out he is reporting to the chairman of the governing body he is reporting to the director of technical education he is reporting to the vice chancellor of the university so anything to happen there he should get the permission of all the three it takes a long time even for a small thing so aided colleges are much in difficulty government colleges you need only the directors approve but as in aided colleges one more stage is there now coming to the uh, next type that is what i said uh, 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 everything is not as green as you think people say that being a private college we have so so many handicaps no actually private college is much more convenient to run really speaking and uh, then uh, in other colleges you see the second guys that is the uh, normally autonomous colleges work like that there will be a director or principal in the college autonomous institutions may have may sometimes designate as director not as principal They, he will be reporting to either board of governors or chairman actually board of governors is headed by the chairman chairman of the institution chairman of means the owner that's it and if it is an autonomous colleges beyond that the principal need not worry 
there will be governments, there will be university, all those things will be there, but that's not a worry for the institution. And now, if you come to some other private colleges, there will be a director or principal, they will be reporting to a manager. For example, in Tamil Nadu, the system is, there will be a person called a correspondent. In Christian colleges, there is a name called bursar. So this bursar or correspondent is a manager appointed by the chairman. So the principal or director will be reporting to him and he will be informing all these things to the chairman of the board. Okay. In private colleges also, board of governors is compulsory. But thing is, namesake board. I mean so many private colleges board. The board will meet and have a tea, that is usual. Then board will discuss about academic excellence and such things. Board will not have any power to discuss about financial aspects because in private colleges, the financial aspects are decided by the investor. Investor means the chairman. Very rare private colleges, the financial aspects are also discussed by the board. Uh, I am a member of one college in Rishu district. Board is the meeting and that board discuss financial aspects. Very rarely. Other colleges do not discuss financial aspects in their board. Okay. I am just uh, telling you. Then uh, uh, another system is many colleges the boards are dormant. They won't call the board at all. The trust of the chairman directly dictates to the principal or director. That is the next system. Many colleges are, especially private colleges are there. Then some government colleges are also there like this. And I had an opportunity to work in a government college like this, that fourth item. For some time I was on deputation as the principal of Sri Jitra Engineering College. Sri Jitra Engineering College has a very effective board. The board consists of Minister of the Chairman, uh, Additional Chief Secretary Higher Education or Principal Secretary Higher Education, Principal Secretary Finance, KSRTC MD, Additional DGP, like that some eight people are there, government officials, plus two nominated experts. This is the board, chaired by the minister. Principal is the member secretary. Then the advantage is, the director or the principal, it was principal there, reporting directly to the trust. Trust will meet every three months, take the decision on everything. Then the full authority is with the principal. It's a very risky position also because principal has to take responsibility for financial aspect also. I think that way there is no other college in Kerala. The principal directly reporting to the minister. Uh, that the principal will have a lot of authority but lot of risk also because uh, you know in such a college, especially when I was working there, in two years we had to spend around 800 lakhs of rupees. So that is the responsibility. And if some, because World Bank gave 600 lakhs, plus college fund 200 lakhs. So this funding responsibility is with the principal, if you are careless, Anytime you can land in jail. That is there. When you get more authority, the risk is also more. More risk is always there when authority is more. People don't know it. People feel that, okay, somebody is having authority. Their risk is high. They are taking that risk. It's at stake. And then the... Then another type is there, where a principal will be there for our institutions, a director will be there for a group of institutions, and they will be reporting the trust of chairman. That system is also in private. Many of the private groups are like that. Private groups means a collection of academic institutions. So these are the way the administration takes place. Now my question is, what is the teacher's role in administration? You all know that whether it is under Health University or under uh, uh, KTU or under Kerala University or Calicut University, all the universities are reporting the UGC in India. All the, no escape. At the national level, we are all reporting the UGC. So here, from different universities, you are there. No matter, all these universities are directly reporting the UGC. And UGC is the apex body, now it will be changed. That name is going to be National Education Commission, that will come within uh, National Higher Education Commission, HEC. That will come within six months now. NEP insists that. That I will discuss when I come to the uh, NEP discussion. As per UGC, you are supposed to work 40 hours a week in the college. My colleagues need not be upset. You are working only 30 hours a week here. The UGC says you must work 
40 hours a week. Out of that, 30 hours physically present. Why the 10 hours if you have some other duty, external examiner, external assignments, that can be maximum 10 hours per week. 30 hours you have to be in college. But then the contact hours are different. And remember, the days which you are present in the college, you are supposed to be present at least for 5 hours. As per UGC, the working time is 8 hours. Any national institution you see, 8.30 to 5.30 will be the working hour. Even IIT, some of my students are faculty here at IIT. They say they are fed up with it. They get some free time only on Saturday and Sunday. Why? 8.30 to 5.30 they have to work. They have to be in the campus. 8.30 to 5.30, 9 hours out of which 1 hour will be lunch break. Remaining 8 hours working into 5 days, 40 hours. This is the calculation. <coughs> Hope you followed. Conduct hours, assistant professor 16. Conduct hours means the number of hours you have to be with the students, either in the class or in the lab. That is conduct hours. 16 hours for assistant professor. Associate professor, 14 hours. 14 hours is the minimum for associate professor, but many universities make that also 16. No objection from UGC for that. Up to 16 for associate. But minimum associate, this is a minimum requirement. More than this, nobody will object. But unions do object. In most of the universities, there are unions which object more than that. And professor and associate professor, 14 hours. And head of the department can have 2 hours class. And principal is also supposed to take 4 or 5 hours. I checked with the principals all over Kerala. Only less than 10 principals do engage class. I do engage class once in a while. But may not be 4 hours. Because I like to engage. The only thing why I am why I'm not engaging more is when some other requirements are there, principal will be missing in the office. To avoid that, I engage very less. But still I engage classes. I like to engage. And I feel that uh, your value is more as a teacher than as an administrator. That is true. Now keep in mind. Once you retire and sit back at home, you will always realize that your value is more as a teacher than as an administrator. Okay. So, this is what we are supposed to do. And now my question is, assistant professor has to work only 16 hours. Professor has to work only 14 hours. What about the remaining 24 or 26 hours to take rest? This is a confusion many people have got. It is not to take rest. It is not to take rest. It is for academic administration and college administration. This is where I want to focus. So two thirds of your time you are given for academic administration and institutional administration. For assistant professors and associate professors, academic administration should be more. For professors and principal or director, College administration should be more. So, is administration your duty? What do you say? Administration is your duty or not? We do feel that administration is not our duty. That is why I wanted to engage this session. With data. What do you mean by academic administration? Conduct of the examinations, paper evaluation, question paper setting, these are all academic administration. I will discuss the list of college administration. I have got a long list. Remember, these things you will not find in any textbooks or journals. Yesterday I have been sitting for a long time and typing one by one the points. Because no articles will be published on this. Why? These people are very clever. Duties which we have to do, we conveniently keep away. So at least we should remember these are what things are meant for us. So nobody should say that I am taking 16 hours class, okay, but you are supposed to work 40 hours. But at least 30 hours you are given in the college, most of the higher institutions, 30 hours per week only is there. Very few institutions have got a bit more. So these 30 hours you are supposed to work, not idle. I think uh, at the moment uh, you reach the college to the moment you leave the college, it is your working time. 
The rest time is only the lunch break. Agree with me or not? Very difficult to agree. Okay, now let us see what all things we have to do. I am starting with the principal's duties because nobody should under evaluate that the principal is having relaxed time. No. What are the principal's duties? If there is any point to be added, you can tell me because I will add in the PPT. And PPT I will not give anybody because I had a very bad experience. Some 18 years back I was presenting a session at uh, Arnavala for the practicing engineers. And then somebody asked me, sir, please will you share the PPT? I shared it. I used to share it till last year. Last year when I went for a program at Ernagulam, I found that a very senior professor from the Cochin University is presenting that topic. I enjoyed it. But I was at dismay. I found that it is my own PPT. Only the name is changed. That was very bad. I didn't ask him because I didn't want to insult him. But so many years have passed. But still I remember the PPT. Why? When you make the PPT, you cannot forget it. So that day I decided, year after, I won't give the PPT to anybody. Let them also work. Why they just take the PPT and present it? And I would have appreciated if he presented that PPT retaining my name. Last week I was having a training session at, uh, now at uh, Calicut. So many people were asking, sir, can you please give the PPT? I said, this is a story, so I won't give. So hereafter, I'm not giving PPT to anybody. Even last year I used to give the PPT. But unethical practices do happen. I, I found that uh, uh, one uh, expert from the USA uh, who has come over to Palgat for a presentation. In every slide he was having his name embedded. I asked him, this was long back, some 10 years back. I asked him why you are putting your copyright every slide. Because he said in US we do like that, otherwise slide wise they will take away. There is no copyright. Anyway, keep in mind, it is better to preserve the PPT if you have made it yourself. If you are taking from somebody, acknowledge it. Suppose there are some PPTs on net you are taking, please acknowledge. Yes, I have taken. What is wrong? You can acknowledge. Knowledge is not our family property. We can take knowledge from, as somebody says, there is no word which you have found. It is found by somebody else in the long past. Okay. Now, what is the role of the principal? Providing instructional leadership. That means, academic leadership also the principal has to give. Only leadership, not action. The principal has to advise what all academic activities are required. Allocating resources and budgets. Especially in certain institutions it is very essential. For example here, all the resource allocation and budget I have to find out myself. But many colleges, principal will not have that duty because the bursar or manager will be there, they will take care of it. It depends on the type of institution. Then encouraging collaboration among staff. That is the most difficult part. Do you feel it? Encouraging collaboration and cooperation among the staff. Very difficult. So the best thing is, whenever somebody comes and tells you complain about the other, listen to it and keep mum. It's the best remedy. <laughs> best a principal can do. So when you become principal, listen to it. Otherwise they will be offended. They will be unhappy. If you listen to it and note it, they will be happy, they will go away. Okay, then the next is, Identifying areas for institution improvement. What this is one Herculean task which most of the principals don't do. If a principal doesn't do such things, we call him a routine principal. What is a routine principal? Just signing the papers which are coming in front of him. A routine principal can never improve the college. A principal who, has, who is keen on improving the college has to identify areas for institution improvement. To my knowledge, such principles are less than 10 percent. 90 percent of the principles are comfortable. Why? They are at the fag end of their service, enjoying the income. Most of the principles will be pretty rich. Why? They have been working for a lot of time. To become a principal, you don't have to be old. As per the new UGC norms, 15 years experience is enough. <coughs> As per the AICT norms, 13 years experience is enough. As per the pharmacy norms, 10 years experience is enough. 
So being a principal is not an old age idea. But only thing is, for example, if you have to be a principal, you have to be a professor for five years. If you have to be a professor for five years, you should have joined as assistant professor with a PhD. Otherwise, you cannot be a principal at 13 years. But by 20 years, you can easily become, provided you feel like becoming. <coughs> and helping to establish college-wide goals. College-wide goals means any college which do not have goals will perish. Like individual goals, we should have goals for the college. Goals for the college can be, say, NAC accreditation in this and this year, NBA accreditation in this and this year, increasing the strength in this. Here we are doing everything in a calculated move. Because uh, if you don't do it in a calculated move, you will have a lot of loss and you cannot even rise. So any institution should have a what is called a strategic planning. I am not going to discuss it now. Strategic planning is something with the principles and the chairman of the trust should know. And if the chairman of the trust is not knowing, the principal has to introduce to the chairman what is called strategic planning. Strategic planning of an institution, I remember long back, 85 or 86, I attended a one week course on strategic planning conducted by AICT at Hyderabad. That is the first time I stayed at Hyderabad for a week. And uh, all the senior professors were coming and telling how to, like IIT directors, ACT chairman, such people were coming and telling how strategy planning they have implemented in their institution. So uh, that is required for actually senior people, but we unions were permitted to attend it. I felt that it's a lot of exposure learning what is strategy planning. Collaborating with parents. Not coalition with parents, collaborating with parents. Very difficult. You will learn it and learn it. When you become a principal, you will learn. Handling the parents is a very difficult thing. Nowadays it is much difficult because the moment the call comes, you feel that they are recording it. I always talk feeling that they are recording it. And not only parents, nowadays even students are recording it. In my mobile, I have got a peculiar system. I sense whether it is recorded or not. And at the end of the talk, I will ask them bluntly, okay, everything is recorded now. They should not feel that we are not knowing it. So I know their reaction at that time. They want to quit immediately. Let it be there. But even teachers, keep in mind, dealing with the parents and students over phone, 99% you believe that your talk is being recorded. Why? I many times get snippets sent by my students. What is it? What the teacher has talked in the class. Teachers be careful. I am not releasing to anybody, even to the HODs. Why? I listen to it and close it. Because to give it to someone else is very dangerous. It's a private matter. The teacher has talked to Sometimes, very rarely, unparliamentary words also have come in. So, teachers, please remember, even in class, you are not safe. They will be having mobile in pocket. They can switch on easily without you knowing it. Otherwise, how they get these snippets? The recordings I am getting because they have recorded it. And that will be the class. I don't know whether other principals are getting it. Because somehow I am very close to my students, so they send anything free to me. They know that I will not tell anybody, that's the reason. And that's a vital information for the college. This is a lesson for everybody who becomes a principal. You have to be very close to your stakeholders. Don't offend them if they give some information. <coughs> Keep it yourself. Trustworthiness is the basic element which is required of a teacher and an administrator. Anything that people tell you, you should listen to and you should keep it with you. Of course, many, now I have told you that I get recordings, but you will never know who sent it. This is the point. You can quote the matter, but not the persons involved. Very dangerous. And uh, this is one area where we get a lot of information. If people trust you, you get a lot of information. And I am lucky I get a lot of it. Why? That will be useful in administration. For example, something goes wrong somewhere, even before their parents will be knowing, I will be knowing. It's a plus point. Maybe sometimes we can take corrective action. 
maybe sometimes we can guide so the teachers should not be police to the students the teachers have to be friends even principals have to be friends to the students but tell them there is a limit to everything that they should know if they accept that limit you are liable to be punished that feeling also should be there with them now public relations and outreach <coughs> this is an era where advertisement cannot bring you results many of the places i go i ask them how many of you read newspapers among the students i have seen one in 100 reads newspapers among the parents i have seen four in 100 reads newspapers it's much better among the grandparents almost 20 percent read newspapers but you don't need the grandparents to know the your things you want the things to be known to the students and parents and the students and parents are never having access to the things which you give in print media so outreach is the new technique outreach by networking outreach by going out to them i think outreach our uh, outreach manager bindu will be taking a session i am not going into it outreach is the essence of advertisement now but outreach has got an advantage it's not direct advertisement it is hidden advertisement and that only can fetch research many colleges are right to learn it for example wherever there is a public function if i am invited i'll go and if i get a chance to address them somewhere i will introduce ahilya somewhere that i am expert in that and also i will say i am working in ahilya ahilya has got this many colleges i am in the engineering college like that people will feel it is harmless because i make a context for that that is also outreach did you get my point so how to utilize this she will discuss in detail next point is managing student behavior many of these things are applicable to teachers also not only to principal how do you manage student behavior individually all the students are good individually but when they become a mob or a gang their behavior changes and of course we have got a difficulty we teachers have got a difficulty we feel that we are perfect we forget that the days where we spend the, in the college or schools this is real if you can remember the days you spend in your college or school you will be much more generous to the students would you get my point and also i have observed one thing those who have been worst in the college and school days become puritans when they are academicians it's actually a paradox if you find that somebody is shouting at students for simple simple mistakes just keep in mind they have been some of the useless people in their student days a studious student when he gets into academics he will empathize with the students and any teacher who empathize with the students only will be recognized by the students lakshmi sirish is here ah uh, lakshmi please stand up all of you look at her now sit down she got 100% feedback from her class of students the only person in this college then i asked the students she teaches so well then some students told me sir it's not only that she loves us what the point it's not whether she is 100% perfect in teaching that is of no concern to them their concern is she loves them i don't know how she made to feel it that she can tell you later but this is the concern for the students but how great a teacher you are if you cannot get into the minds of the students they have got a lot of mind blocks if you cannot get into the minds of the so i am avoiding now giving you memento this is the recognition okay. <laughs> is it okay now right now keep in mind this now the other administrative task this have to be shared by the teachers i'll discuss them
now from the institutional head level to teachers level. Teachers means I am including all because what is the difference? Only two hours difference. The difference between an assistant professor and an associated professor is only two hours. Two hours difference. Means professors have got two hours more for administrative work. And HOD will have still two hours more. That's all. Okay. These are usual things you do in the class. Organize the classroom delivery, I don't have to explain. You know how to prepare your material, how to present in the class. And the uh, UGC has got a format for evaluation of the teacher that gives all these questions. Whether you are present in the class, whether you come prepared, whether you reach the class in time, all these are, all the ten questions are involved there. Next is writing lesson plans. In many private colleges in Kerala, the teachers have to write the lessons and the notes in advance and show the principal and get it signed. Anyway, we don't have a system here. I feel it's a horrible system. <coughs> Once when I went to a college, the principal has brought and shown me the notebooks of notes written by the teachers. As it is a great thing. Every teacher, before every class, notes is prepared and the principal is signing. And at the end, I told, I never prepared notes in my life. Why? There are standard textbooks. Why do you make mistakes in it? Any textbook, standard textbook you prepare, you prepare PPT. Why you have to write down the notes and copy? Academic PPTs you can give to your students. Because you are taking the textbook, it is not your origin. If you are preparing originally, it is different. But any class you take the PPTs from textbooks or journals. Okay. So why do you have to write? But all these things are in writing lessons and assessing students. Assessing students, I think uh, there is supposed to be a separate session. But while assessing students, one major mistake which we do is that we feel they are our equals. It is just like uh, an elephant thinking that the dog is its equal. This mistake we always commit. I tell my teachers here every time that the duty of the teacher is not to judge the student. It is to lift the student. If you are going to judge, they may not be nowhere near you. You have got a post-graduation, some of you have got doctorate. They are just trying to be a graduate. What do you equate them? This mistake happens everywhere. <coughs> Providing instructions, collaborating with other staff in reference to curriculum development and implementation. I, this point I am seeing in private colleges it is very less. In government aided colleges I see the teachers have a lot of academic interaction among them. Like what is the gap in the syllabus? <coughs> what changes should be? Because they are more involved in the curriculum development maybe. They will give the recommendations to the university. In many of the university committees they will be here. But in private institutions I am seeing it is very less. Then interacting with parents and other administrative tasks. Interacting with parents, again, you will learn it by doing it. There are certain things to learn by doing. Interacting with parents is something you cannot be given training. Parents are of different types. Some are belligerent, some are calm, some are pious. <coughs> so interacting with each type of them, you will learn by experience. That is why an experienced teacher is good in managing parents. Am I right? Also your age also they will consider. Now we are going more on to the administrative level. The teacher's administrative duties will be at two levels, at the institution level and at the department level. Let us see at the college level what are the administrative duties to be done by the teachers. First thing required is promotion of our institution 
among the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? For an institution, the stakeholders are the students, the parents, the society, the regulatory authorities. So, any college image is going to the stakeholders through the through the teachers, not through principals. No stakeholder will ask, come and ask the principal, sir, how is your college? Whether it's having a good standing, whether it's performing well. Nobody will come and ask the principal. I think only once I had a chance, one of my students took the admission this year for her son. She came and bluntly asked me, sir, what is the standard of this college? Other than that, nobody has asked me so far. They will ask these questions to teachers. And if a teacher says, average, that spreads. Not only to one parent, to many parents. So, any teacher who is committed to the institution should not demote the institution by any context. If you feel that this institution is not worth, why do you work there? It's a very simple question. If you are working in an institution, you are, you are bound and duty to promote that institution among the stakeholders. Because the word of the mouth is more important than any written advertisement, any video advertisement. <coughs> and the word of the mouth transfers or transcends from the teachers to the students, to the public, to the possible candidates, to the parents and so on. So where is the origin? If this college is to have a good impact in the society, it has to start from our teachers. No doubt. Whatever I say, people will not take it that way. Because being the head of the institution, I am bound to promote the institution, they will feel like. But the teacher's opinion is different. So remember, if you work in any institution, I am not saying that you should work in that institution forever. I always tell people, don't worry about where you are working. Wherever you are working, if you are committed to your work, you are great, that's all. Whether you work in this college or some other college, if you are committed to your work, that is more important. You need not be loyal to the chairman or principal or anyone. You should be loyal to your work, that's all. And those who are committed to their own work, people will recognize. Those who are trying to show off loyalty to the higher authorities, in this case it is shopping. They will understand. Remember, they have crossed all these stages and come to that level. The chairman of the college or the principal of the college has been at some time at your level. So every gesture that you do, they easily understand. They may not react. So it is better to be committed to the work, not committed to any individual. That is what I am saying. If you are not promoting your institution, you are not worth to be an employee then. Keep in mind this. This, every administration is careful about people. Say for example, if any of you teachers go and give a negative opinion to someone in the public, it is very likely that I may get it back from them. Why? Because I am so much working in the public. That's the reason. But normally principals may not know it. Somebody else may know it. But that will spread in the society. For example, some time back, I got a report from the public that one staff member of this institution has spoken like uh, this college is average or below average or something like that. And uh, this was reported to me by a person in the public. I knew the name of the person also but I didn't call and tell him. I told in general like in this forum, in the teachers meeting that it should not be done. Why? I know why that man has told like that. I know the reason also. Because when you are not gratified with what you are given, when you desire for something and you don't get it, in psychology there are nine defense mechanisms for that. This is one among the defense mechanisms. But that spoils the institution. Suppose you are asking for something and you are not getting it. You may have a negativity, but then you have two options, either to serve further or to quit. But no right to degrade the institution, keep in mind. So that is the first, it's it's more than the administrative duty. Okay. Next comes what is called <coughs> outreach of the institution. There will be a session on that. You have to reach out to the people, to the public, to the stakeholders by different types of activities. 
by social activities, technical activities, scientific activities, educational activities, cultural activities, etc., etc. We are doing a lot of such things here. To be very frank, when I discuss with the principals of other engineering colleges, we are doing the highest of such activities in Kerala. Numbers, by numbers. But by quality, I am not sure yet. We have to decide by quality whether we do it. And uh, of course, in that session it will be discussed. Then admission. Admission activity is another administrative activity. Many of the teachers in the colleges do not even know what is the requirement for an admission there, what are the procedure for an admission there, what are the regulations for the admission there, then what type of teacher will be. If you don't know what are the requirements for a student, I have heard in one of the cases some people saying that I will inquire and tell you. You are supposed to be updated. You should know what is the eligibility of a candidate in your college, what is the fees in your college, what is the procedure for admission. Otherwise what people will think, what a teacher this lady is or this man is. They will rate you as a useless person. So don't do that. If somebody is asking a teacher in Ayurveda college, what is the admission procedure there? You should be able to tell them like a parent. Then only you are a regular teacher there. Do you get my point? I don't know whether in asset everybody is in that condition. What do you say? How much percentage you believe? Seventy percent are that. So not perfection. Thirty percent are yet to come up to that. Okay. We will see to it that the remaining thirty percent also will come up to that level. It is true. Teachers should be involved in that. Then the next point is student discipline. Very simple example. A group of students are making a lot of noise in your corridor in the working time. As a teacher, what do you do? Three, four options. You will ignore it and walk away. You will smile at them and enjoy it. Or you will tell, class is working, go to classes. Or you will go and inform the HOD. Or you will go and inform the principal. What you will do? What you will do? What is your choice? If you are a committed teacher, if you are a committed teacher, you will tell those students to go to their classes, they will go. Maybe some teachers have told me, if they react to me, what will happen? Power comes by using it. This is a lesson for all of you. Power comes by using it. If you never use your power, you are powerless. Whatever position you are. In my life, I never had a doubt whether the teacher has got a power, of, power for this or not. If somebody makes noise in front of me, even when I was the junior most faculty in the class, I will send them to class. Why not? Nobody will object. If you object to, there is a mechanism in the institution which will take care of it. That is why you have head of the department, you have principal, you have chairman, you are a part of the chain. Don't think that you are alone. Any teacher, keep in mind that you are not alone. In this college, if any student misbehaves to a student, I take it as a misbehavior to the institution. No doubt. It's not to a teacher. But very rarely such cases do come up. So, try to use your power and authority and see whether it works or not. I have, I have heard many female teachers especially say, when I say something, if they humiliate, have you tried it? Try it. If you are bold, nobody will humiliate. If they feel, in, in Malayalam there is an old saying that if a, if a coconut tree is like this, people will run over it. If it is like this, nobody can run over it. So be vertical, be straight. This is where I also need. Even after telling these things, I see most of the teachers here also do any of the other four options. Am I right? Why? It is the lack of assertion. It's a personal behavioral characteristics. You have got an assertion character, you will be doing it everywhere. Not only here, suppose you, you are a female, you get married to a man, you are being vandalized. If you have got a quality of assertion, you will not withstand it. You will say you get lost. 
For example, uh, three days back, one of my former students called me. And uh, she told me, sir, I'm working at so-and-so place, etc. I asked her, where is your husband? She said, uh, I'm separated, sir. I asked why. She said, uh, uh, he's, he's an engineer, basically, but he's drunk art. And he started also using drugs. And he started physical violence against me. I said, you get lost. I said, you have done a good thing. Also, I asked, did you try to correct him? That is first thing. And she said, okay, I tried to correct sir three, four years. But again, he becomes good and again goes bad. So what to do? I said, goodbye. And uh, I asked her, what is your experience after he is disposed? He said, I am peacefully leaving now. So, when something grows cancerous, you should have the capacity, not only in life, everywhere, the capacity to cut off that cancer. So that quality has to be inbuilt and it has to descend from you to your next generation. Well, if you are bold, your next generation will be bold. And only if they are bold, they are next generation. So don't feel that, okay, if I tell something to the students, what they will feel like. No such question. They will obey. And maybe they will tell among themselves, this teacher is very rigid or very strict. Let it be, what is wrong? Your work will be easier. Please do it. Then the next thing is, actively participating in arts, sports, technical, cultural programs, etc. And many teachers, even in my college, I feel that only if I call and assign them some work, they will do. Now, this is not to be assigned. Keep in mind, if you are a teacher, you should initiate such programs. Why do you want the principal or HOD to call and say, please conduct a festival, please conduct a seminar, please conduct a conference. It's bad. Ignited teachers will do it themselves. Please raise your hands. How many of you have taken initiative to conduct something initiated by you? I just want to see what is your initiation level. Please raise your hands. How many of you have initiated a program in your institution by yourself? And then the higher authorities will definitely cooperate. Please raise your hands. Nobody is there? No one is there. See? See the faith? It is not to be initiated by the principal or actually. Why? Their head is always involved. I always feel that my head doesn't get free time. Because around the clock it is working for institutional things. Then <coughs> initiating an idea for a program just to come from the teacher's level. But teachers don't do it. So what I do is once in a while I start initiating it. But that is wrong. It is wrong. The principal initiating some program here many things happen like that. I know it's a, myself that it is wrong. But why? Because others are not initiated. Why they feel it is somebody else's work and somebody else will do it. No, it is your work. Please keep in mind, if you do that, you learn a lot of things. And these are some of the footsteps to climbing the administration. Then this is another thing. representation in the administrative bodies of the college like governing body. Now there is a university norm. In the governing body of the college teachers representation should be there. It, it is a UGC initiated activity and then the college committee. So many committees are there in every college. Most of the colleges I have never seen a staff member in my college. I have been heading Four colleges. I think I, I was principal of one, two, three, four colleges. And HOD in another college, five colleges. In these five colleges, I have never seen a staff member coming and saying that, Sir, I am willing to work in this committee, even in this college. Why? Why it is so? Ah, this is a lack of fire within. Teachers who are having that fire within, we call them ignited teachers. We miss a lot of them. In my young days, I used to take up many things initiated by myself. And I expected my colleagues also to do it. But in none of the colleges I have seen that. We are missing in that. Please, please think of it. Then so many other bodies like NSS, IEDC, IIC, YIP, IEA, IST, UBA, KDS, ASAP, PMKV, 
like Ayush, so many are there. But all this I feel the principal instructs somebody to take up when the mail comes. Why can't we start the other way? I would like my teachers to come up the other way. Okay? I think uh, in, uh, uh, in biology there is a system. For example, <coughs> if you show some eatable items, the dog will come. After removing it, if you show some stone piece also, it will come. Assuming that it is an eatable item. This psychology technique, we will have to apply now, I think. Nobody is coming with any proposal. Why not? Even so many funding agencies are there. So many. I used to tell in our uh, training programs. Funding programs where you can avail a lot of research fund. Nobody comes. Rarely do people come. That too, recently some three, four senior people have come with the ideas. The juniors are not concerned about that. These are areas where the teachers have to, these are all administrative activities. Then <coughs> coordinating and even when AICT or UGC is conducting some seminar for some purpose, I rarely see our teachers attending it. Why? They are not interested in associating with national level bodies. These are some of the areas if you want to grow in academics, <coughs> even FDP. You see, FDP, Faculty Development Program. Last line, organizing FDPs. How many of you have initiated an FDP yourself? This is an FDP. Let me see, how many of you initiated? One. Only one? Anybody else? No. Why? You can all initiate an FDP. No college will oppose to it. They will be happy. The college management will be really happy if you initiate an FDP. So these are of the areas where uh, we miss. And then the department level. Research projects and publications. Publication is one missing area in most of the Ahalya institutions. Why? Why the publication is missing? It's, it's having extra point in any accreditation. Publications are having extra point in any accreditation. We are missing because we don't care about it. Now in our college we have made it compulsory from this year. Each staff member should come up with at least one index paper. I'm just trying. Out of compulsion sometimes it may happen. Do you think it will happen? People started working. Very good. Even out of compulsion, something works better, it is good. So I request the other principals also. I think uh, other principals are, one principal was here, she left. Other principals also to insist on that. Why? Out of compulsion, at least some purpose will come up. <coughs> Student mentoring, advising, technical outreach programs, MOUs, internship. MOUs and all again going from the college level down should come from the bottom level. I think in our case one or two departments came with the MOU proposal. So this has to come from the teachers level 